Welcome to another video on Logbook Pro. This video we're going to take a look at the reports. Probably the second most important area of Logbook Pro. One is getting your data in, the second being getting your data out. Logbook Pro offers many reports. The first click of the report button on the toolbar and you go, oh, that's not too many. Then you actually look into the reports that are available, including the option of creating your own reports. We have tons of reports available, especially for your flight log. Jeppesen style, MGO Ant custom leather binders. We have reports to fit those binders that are custom designed just for that. We can look at flight log grouping and then look at some of the other reports. Because this is such an important element, we're going to take a look at several reports. First, let's show a basic report and then go over uh, what we see in the report window. When you start a report, just as well as a graph, you're going to be uh, displayed a date filter capability. The ability to, to actually filter the data that you're going to show in your report. The default filter is to start with the first of the current year and go up to the current day, say today being the 28th of February. We can actually choose any day that we want by setting the, the value in the calendar. And I want to show you a quick way of changing the dates in the calendars because it's a frequently asked question about having to click so many times. I wish we could just type in the date. Well, let me show you how easy it is. You want to change the year? Maybe you want to go back to 1988? It would be an awful lot of clicks, month, 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 month. Let's just click the year. When we click the year in this title here, notice this up down arrow that appears. All we've got to do is click down arrow a couple times, and there we are at 1988. Maybe we want October. Click the month. Select October. We want the 14th. Select the 14th value in the calendar. That easy. And as you can see, the uh, caption up at the top gives you a quick read of the date that you have set in your calendar. You can also set the exact date you want in the ending date of your filter, or click the, click the word today here in the lower portion. Just click the word today, and today's date will be set. There is also the option of setting custom dates from preset date filters from this button in the lower portion of the date filter dialog. You can set from today, this month, this quarter, this year, and so on, as you can read here in the available options. So a great way of quick set selecting the uh, date filter. If we have a date filter set, we click the Generate Report button here on the bottom center, and it will apply the date filter and pull only the, da the data within the date filter. Otherwise, if we click the All Data button on the lower left, no filter will be applied and we will get all of the data. Let's run our report and, and uh, go through a walkthrough of what's available in the report window. I actually ran the... All right, we've got the Aircraft Configuration Summary Report, which I selected from the bottom of the Aircraft Report options, and what you can see is a breakdown by aircraft type in this specific report, and then our total number of hours per type. In this report, we also get breakdowns by our category. There's our airplane hours, glider hours, lighter than air, our class, everything that's in the options aircraft area. So as you can remember in the logbook discussions in those videos, we didn't log complex time. We didn't log airplane single engine land time. We didn't need to log those pieces of information. Logbook Pro takes the duration from the aircraft type and automatically calculates those values for us. Here's our airplane time. Very simple and straightforward. Okay, now let's go across the sub toolbar and show you the power of this report system. A high speed, extremely powerful report engine in Logbook Pro. If you right click at any time, you can bring up menu items, same as which are in this sub toolbar. The far left icon is the tab table of contents. We'll show you how that works in some of the other reports. We can bring up a ruler so you can see the, the uh, display. If you want to capture this report in Logbook Pro's native report format, click the save icon and you can save the report in the Logbook Pro report, report definition file which can be viewed at a later time within Logbook Pro exactly with the data and formatting as you have it. You can also take this report 
RDF file and email it or post it to a web, whatever you want to do, and uh, someone else can load it within their Logbook Pro and look at your data precisely, such as for a job application, etc. You would use this open icon to actually open the RDF file that either you saved or somebody sent you to view. The uh, printer icon is actually to print the report. We can print a select number of pages or select the entire report as well as your standard print dialog options to it modify your printer etc. Page setup will allow us to change the orientation of the paper, the margins if you have it, or the, the uh, paper size etc. Your standard page setup dialog if you have the need to change that information. You can copy the current page, the, the displayed page to the Windows clipboard which can then be pasted into another application such as Microsoft PowerPoint, Word, any type of op application that supports the Windows clipboard. We have a search capability in the reports. You can actually type in, uh, and as well as restricted criteria. Uh, let's see if we can find the PA38 in a, in a search. And sure enough, there's the PA38 that shows up. So the search is, is uh, very capable. We're at the end of the report. It will scroll it into view so you can see the result of your search criteria. So great capability to search for specific information within your report. We're looking right now at single page preview. We can look at a side by side preview. If you see this particular page, you can double click it and it will come into view. If you have uh, enough pages, you can go into a two by two mode so you can actually um, look at multiple pages of your report very simply. We can set custom options, such as the personalized information that's in the option user area. By clicking that button, you'll see the personal information appear in the top of the report. We'll go ahead and turn that off. We can show a page border. If you want to add that visual effect, you can see the border that appeared. We'll go ahead and turn that off. We can choose the option of shading odd rows for readability. We don't have that option in this report. Go ahead and turn that back off. We'll show that in the log area. We can adjust page numbering, which can, whether or not you want to even show page numbers. But for example, in the logbook area, if you want to print out pages up till now, and then later on you want to print out the pages from the, where you left off, then you might just want to go with a page number, such as page one, page two, as your total number of pages is actually going to grow as time goes on. So you might not want to use page X, you know, your current page of total number of pages. If you're printing a complete solution, then yeah, you probably want to use the page X of XX option. The date and the name on the first page, and your branding options. Here's the, uh, the name that is entered in the options user info area. And then the date that is option to be placed on this report. We can change the color of the paper if we so desire. We'll set it back to white because this yellow is pretty bright. We can change the date filter. Remember, in this specific report, we didn't choose any date filter, but we could actually uh, bring down the date and look at uh, the current year. And it will automatically rerun the report and display the data. We've only flown these two types in the current year. And we can come back and show all the data again. And there's in a flash. You see how fast that is. We've got all the data rerunning another report. If you were to go back into the logbook area and change any of the values, maybe you meant to fly a C-172 instead of C-152 in your log entry, you entered the wrong type, you would go back to the log, change it, come back, hit refresh, and it would instantly update your report. We have zoom control. We can zoom into the report. You can also select zoom options here from this dropdown. And we can navigate the different pages by clicking the up and down arrow or selecting the page from the drop-down list we want to go to. Let's take a look at one of the other reports. And in this case, we'll look at the flight log report, my favorite, the Jefferson style. And we'll look at the current year. We'll talk about these advanced options in the next video, which you can see 
in this case, we've got a report that has been built to model after the Logbook Pro, I'm sorry, the Jefferson paper format that many people are familiar with, drawn right out of Logbook Pro. Okay, you've got your page numbers. You can see your single engine LAN, your single engine C. Your columns have appeared automatically based on your options aircraft. Here's your aircraft category and class columns, your landing columns, just as you're used to seeing. You can see we've actually turned off the row shading. We'll turn it back on. And there's the row shading again for you in this logbook. Let's take a look at how the table of contents section works. Let's look at a grouped report this time. Let's look at our flight log data by aircraft type. And you can see how it will actually break down your data by aircraft type. Running the report on the entire log, so it'll take just a couple seconds because we're probably going to be in a significant number of pages as well as the layout is being transferred from our spreadsheet style log entry area and applied to our report. So our column titles and our layout, remember our out and in we hid in an earlier video? There's no out and in here. Remember we changed the caption from root of flight to root in an earlier video? You can see that all those settings are pulled forward from our spreadsheet style log area. There's our particular aircraft type and then our legs value or our, or our total values for numeric columns. You can see in the table of contents that I can actually go to a specific value. Maybe I want to find my trusty C-152. Go to the 28 Feb flight and there it is. And remember we can also do a search but here is our 28 Feb flight in the table of contents. So very a uh, neat capability that I actually have an explorer style or tree style system for my report that I can navigate the report and find information. I can find it over here in the table of contents, click it, and then I am taken to the value in the report itself. So this is a uh, quick overview of just the report system. Let's just take a look at some of the neat reports that are made available. And then in the next video, we'll take a look at some of the advanced options with the reports and uh, creating templates of, for your own uh, capability. The percentage summaries report, percentage summaries report, is a uh, neat report. A lot of people use them for job interviews. We will show your total hours, your total landings, total approaches, and then your totals broken down by your aircraft configuration, your custom type or custom information that you've configured, both in the hours column and a percent column. For example, some employers when you uh, uh, submit an application, want to know what percent of your total time is instrument time. And you can see in this particular example, we're looking at 2% instrument versus total time. So you can see that your number of hours total, and then what percentage of your total time is that particular item. So a handy report. Let's see what else we have here. We can look at approach summaries, aircraft history, route history, Aircraft configuration totals, which is the same one we looked at in the very beginning. Yep, and uh, we can look at uh, for each type or aircraft information. We can also get a look back summary for those of you that are flying the uh, regulation that require you to uh, keep track of your hours, last six, you know, seven, six, 12 months, etc., which is also available here on the status bar. Same type of information, seven, six, and 12 months. This month, you know, just uh, some more information. As you notice when I brought up this report, I can choose this look back information based off of today's date or a specific date. So I could actually select a specific date here that I want to compare my uh, look back data against and run a report based on that date instead of the current date. Many of you love the FAA 87-10 form where it actually fills out this data for you. You don't have to go into any you know, uh, major analysis mode inside of uh, you know, using your calculator or whatever, uh, you just go ahead and hit the report button for the 87-10 and you can see we are given all the information we need to fill out our 87-10 uh, part 3 form in no time flat. It's just that easy. No more number crunching. That's the basics of the 
report engine within Logbook Pro. We took a look at the toolbar and options available. We took a look at some of the basic report features and the report capability. In this next video, we're going to take a look at uh, some of the advanced features of the Jeppesen report. We'll take a look at the report templates, and we'll take a look at the report combiner. So let's get on to the next video.